Dear students, now we will finish off a very small topic on internal thoracic artery. So here is a beautiful image exposing the internal thoracic artery. So first I will label where it is. So here the chest wall is removed and reflected to see the inner surface of the chest wall. So inner chest surface of the chest wall we can see here the internal thoracic artery. So from the anterior view in the chest wall within the chest wall intact chest wall we can see here the internal thoracic artery. So this artery it is uh, it supplies mainly the anterior chest wall and mammary gland. So we can see the and uh, the rest of the anterior chest wall we can appreciate pectoralis major muscle and other muscles like uh, external oblique muscle, serratus anterior, pectoralis minor. So pectoralis major, external oblique, then serratus anterior, pectoralis minor, all these muscles also can be appreciated within the chest wall here in this image. So we can see here the internal thoracic artery, it's giving off the branches to the mammary gland as well as to the anterior chest wall. So we can see these branches. So there are two internal thoracic arteries one is right the other is left which is uh, which are situated deep to the anterior chest wall one on the either side of sternum so here is the sternum so here one side thoracic artery internal thoracic artery the other side will be the other on other side of the sternum let's see the origin of internal thoracic artery internal thoracic artery gets origin from subclavian artery so the first part of subclavian artery so we can see origin here so marking up to understand so this is the origin of internal thoracic artery from the first part of subclavian artery about 2.5 centimeters above the medial end of the clavicle. So here is the clavicle. So 2.5 centimeters above the medial end of the clavicle opposite to the origin of thyro cervical trunk. So the other side it is not reflected skin. So the origin of So the, it is exactly at the level of origin of thyro cervical trunk. So let's see the course and termination. So here the anterior chest wall is dissected and removed and exposed. So you are seeing from the inner aspect of the anterior chest wall here in this image. So here the chest wall is removed. So the cut parts of clavicles are seen and these are the ribs. So this is the inner surface of ribs and we can appreciate sternocostalis muscle which gets origin from the sternum going to the ribs on the inner surface of the ribs and we can also appreciate the inter intercostal vessels and nerves so here is our internal thoracic artery or internal mammary artery so internal thoracic artery we can see it descends behind the medial end of the clavicle so the medial end of the clavicle just now in previous picture i had shown and uh, it descends down and it runs up till the upper six coastal cartilages it runs along the coastal cartilages so I'll show you these are the coastal cartilages. So 
these are the costal cartilages so it runs on the inner aspect of the upper six costal cartilages and one centimeter away from the lateral margin of sternum so this is sternum so just one centimeter lateral to the lateral border of sternum it ends in the sixth intercostal space by dividing into superior epigastric and musculophrenic branches here is the schematic image for you for us to understand better so here is the internal and we see it is dividing into superior epigastric and musculophrenic branches So let's talk about the relations of uh, internal thoracic artery. Here the anterior chest wall is removed. So it is from the posterior view what we are seeing from, from inner side. The posterior view of the sternum and internal thoracic artery. So it is related anteriorly to the medial end of the clavicle. So the clavicles are cut off here. And it is related to the internal jugular vein. So the vein which is running down from the neck is the internal jugular vein and it is related to brachiocephalic vein so this is brachiocephalic vein and it is related to phrenic nerve so phrenic nerve is removed here phrenic nerve and uh, anteriorly it is related to pectoralis major this is pectoralis major upper six intercostal cartilages so these are the cartilages one two three four five and six intercostal cartilages and external intercostal membranes internal intercostal muscle and upper six intercostal nerves so these are the structures related anteriorly posteriorly it is related from above downwards it is related to the second coastal cartilage so posteriorly it is related to second coastal cartilage where it is related to endothoracic fascia endothoracic fascia is a loose layer of connective tissue which lies deep to the intercostal spaces a ribs and pleuritis so it is in between the ribs and the pleura the loose connective tissue is called as endothoracic fascia so, and it is also related below the second intercostal space it is related to sternocostalis muscle which intervenes between the artery and the endothoracic fascia and pleura. So next coming to the internal mammary vein, internal thoracic vein otherwise it is called as internal thoracic vein. We can see a vein here in this image running along with the internal thoracic artery which is called as internal thoracic vein. So here it is on the other side. So this, this vein it accompanies the internal mammary artery by two vena committentes. So you can see two veins on each side. So we can see here two veins are present in between the arteries here. So there are two veins on each side which are the vena committentes of internal thoracic vein and which un unite at the level of third costal cartilage so you can see here they are united here at the level of third costal cartilage to form internal thoracic mammary vein so here this is the internal thoracic mammary vein on each side and along the medial side of the artery finally it terminates into brachiocephalic vein at the root of neck so this completes about the internal thoracic vein or internal mammary vein. Let's see the branches. The branches of internal thoracic artery, anterior intercostal arteries, pericardiophrenic artery. So here we can see these two arteries are anterior intercostal arteries which are the short and small branches lie in the intercostal space. 
pericardiophrenic artery it arises at the root of the neck above the first costal cartilage and descends along the phrenic nerve and uh, to the diaphragm and it supplies the pericardium as well as the pleura and mediastinal branches they are the small inconstant twigs which supply the connective tissue thymus and in front of the pericardium so this completes about the internal thoracic artery internal thoracic vein and branches of internal thoracic artery so talking about the clinical implications of this internal mammary artery internal mammary artery it is often used for grafting so internal mammary artery graft is preferred over the grafts from other vessels because uh, it lasts long and it has been found that internal mammary arteries are less prone to develop atherosclerosis because of their histological peculiarity the walls of these arteries contain only elastic tissue and the cells of their endothelial lining that they secrete some chemicals which prevent atherosclerosis so that is the reason uh, internal mammary artery is often chosen for grafting the left inter, uh, internal mammary artery is preferred over the right uh, internal mammary artery because it is easier to access and uh, in coronary artery bypass graft that is called cabg procedure internal thoracic artery is also utilized to treat the coronary heart disease and when the segment of an coronary artery is blocked by atherosclerosis the diseased arterial segment is bypassed by inserting a graft so the that is the main use of internal carotid artery and other commonly used vessels apart from internal thoracic artery or internal mammary artery is great saphenous vein so great saphenous vein is also used for grafting in cabg so this completes the applied aspect and anatomy of internal thoracic or internal mammary artery and vein thank you